we looked at gradient descent to find a background. Now let's look at the full, more robust version. Welcome to SETI Astro. It took a bit of work to really finalize the uh, full algorithm and scoring such that the gradient descent would be very robust and land on the near optimal solution every single time, even in the fast search mode. Garrett and I are really excited to present the production find background script. So let's uh, talk about what it actually does and uh, see some examples. When you first open the script, there is a drop down to select your image, but it will default to the to the active window. There are various filters that are used in the scoring. The standard deviation in there not only will utilize the average brightness of the region for the gradient descent, but it will also score the standard deviation along with it, such that less noisy areas of similar brightness will be scored more favorably. There is also an option that's currently not checked for uh, the distribution fit. Photons entering our telescopes actually don't follow a normal distribution. They follow a Poisson distribution. And what that checkbox will do will score the region more favorably if it follows a Poisson distribution a little bit better. Uh, by default, it's unchecked. Uh, the default values in here do a fabulous job and are very robust anyways. There are also tooltips, as you can see, over everything in case you're, you're curious. The uh, next filter down, the absolute median average deviation, is not the same as MAD. This will score the region based on the symmetry of the noise in there. Most cases you will not want to ever use this filter. It's computationally intensive, and again, photons entering the telescope don't follow a normal distribution, so you wouldn't expect them to be necessarily symmetric. So that's by default off. And then there's also a filter out objects uh, filter. If you find that the default setting is including objects, uh, you can turn that filter on. Again, that's more computationally intensive. It's really just utilizing the uh, star detection process within PixInsight to avoid those areas. By default, with how the script utilizes gradient descent, it's going to avoid the stars. So that is also unchecked. There's two different search routines. The fast search does use our gradient descent algorithm. It will cut up the image into a number of grids analyze those grids pretty quick, take the best set of them, and then do gradient descent within them. The slow search literally checks every single region in the entire image. It takes forever. And in all my testing, gives the same exact result as the fast search. The fast search algorithm is truly robust and remarkable. The only thing you may actually change is the size. And that's the uh, region of interest or the preview window size when you're done. Right now it's defaulted to a 50 by 50 window. You may want to make that smaller or bigger just depending on your image. 50 by 50 is good in almost every, almost every single image. Uh, we have gotten questions if that's enough sample points. And 50 by 50 grid is 2,500 pixels. In, in an RGB image, that's 7,500 mathematical values to determine the, the background. It is more than enough. In, in fact, you can go down to a 25 by 25 and it still be well sufficient. The spacing rate is just really how quickly you'll try to descend down the gradient. The search grid width is how large the initial grid size is that it does do the checks on for the initial search and then out of that initial search in this case it's going to use the top 40 in order to start the gradient descent there's a couple other options 
Uh, print information to the console. That's good. It gives you the statistics when it's done. And then the generate background preview you definitely want on. That actually puts the preview area down there. And you can name it whatever you want, which is which is nice. So it won't be preview, preview one. You can call it background. You can call it region of interest, whatever you want. And then there's a, a nice button. If you, for whatever reason, run this a couple times, uh, either playing with options or you're just curious as to how these options uh, may affect where it finally lands, there's a remove previous preview button or just deletes the old region of interest. One final thing for options is it does have the new instance blue triangle. You can drag that off. It'll save the settings in here. And then uh, you can go ahead and drag and drop that onto images and it will directly and immediately process that image to find the background. Perfect if you want to save this icon onto the desktop, then you could just always drag and drop it uh, and, it'll, and it'll go ahead and find the background for you. So let's quickly run through some examples. This is just gonna be the default settings. I got an image of galaxies over here. You do wanna remove the gradients and the stacking artifacts around the edge and uh, just hit search. It'll go ahead and it cuts up the whole image into a number of starting conditions, looks at those uh, pretty quickly and then jumps right into analyzing the top 40 of them for the best background solution. And when it's done, uh, it pops back up the dialogue in case you wanted to just uh, do it on a different image, or you could just go ahead and close that. In the process console, it does uh, give you the statistics and stuff at the, at the end. And the background it found is perfect for something like SPCC, where you need a background to do the neutralization. You could just drag that background into the region of interest and apply SPCC to the image. And then after SPCC is done. You could always do a linked STF to just see what the preview is. I do want to show why it's going to be important to remove the, the gradient. So if we just open the script, what it's going to do, right, is it utilizes gradient descent. So it's like putting balls on a hill. They're going to roll downhill to find the, the low points and call that the background. And if you have a large gradient in the image, it's just going to roll down from those bright regions right all the way down to the dark regions. And that may not necessarily be uh, the background at all, right? It's, it's just following the, the gradient. So running it, found a background right down where we're expecting, somewhere down in this dark valley here. So very important you remove the gradients. Next, I wanted to show it on a very dense star field. So here's the lobster claw and bubble. We'll go ahead and just run it again on the on the defaults. I will also say these are very large images. They're, they're drizzled. So even on really big images or really small images, it does not have any problem finding the background for you. And here's the background it found. We can zoom right in on it. And even in this dense star field, it found a really nice spot here in the dark area and missed all those stars. The last example, I wanna do a field where there's nebulosity in pretty much the entire frame. So it's a, it's a much more difficult test to actually find a, a real background in here but again just default settings and we'll we'll let it run and there we go here's the background found it in one of the few places where there isn't uh, nebulosity 
and you can see it squeezed itself right in between these these stars here as, as well. I want to give Garrett a huge shout out. He did a very excellent job getting all the coding developed for this. I was really the the math help in really firming up our algorithm and he just did an amazing job getting this all written and uh and developed here i will put his contact information in the video description and he is also available on a astro forum site it is in german but the uh the auto translate works just well uh, you do have to register to be a, a member on that forum but uh registration is free you can find the script it'll be under script SETI astro find background I do also have a standalone version on my website, setiastro.com, under the PixInsight scripts. If you scroll down, it'll be there, the Find Background Preview. Uh, this is where the beta version used to be, and now we have the full release. I hope you get some amazing use out of this tool. Please comment, like, and subscribe.